everybody. Welcome to another episode of Orange Grow 55. I brought my great friend with me and a collaborator on the channel, Mr. Vash Sky, the host of Freshly Squeeds. We're going to talk about the new Magic Key program at the Disneyland Resort. Mr. Vash Sky, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well. How about you, sir? I'm doing okay, man. I, I, I'm actually kind of coming off of my second cold this month mm -hmm. uh, i've had a bad track record this month but i'm feeling much much better today so yeah that, doing pretty well that is fantastic i'm glad to see you healthy i'm glad to see you healthy um uh, for to, to, to make these things a little bit quicker for you you can find me at vash sky on twitter it is right here i do a show uh on your channel called Freshly squeezed, your source for juicy news and info, squeezed fresh right from the grove. I know, I know, I know. You guys have been waiting for videos. I, I, I get it. I understand. But man, this, these things move so incredibly fast, guys. Yeah. I, I do apologize. I, I get invested in one story and another story hits. It's like, oh, so I, I, I do have to improve on that, and we will. Don't worry. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to talk about Magic Key. Okay, this is inter This is mm. very, very interesting news. Um, so. It's been a, a long, ongoing story. You know, Disneyland surprisingly canceled, you know, the annual pass program, right? Yeah. And they said a new program will be coming. And for the past year plus, we heard rumor after rumor after rumor about how revolutionary this new program was going to be. There's going to be oh. a point system, a membership. A yeah, this, well, well we, got, we got huge statements. We, we have statements from Chapek and others on conference calls, on quarterly earnings calls. These questions that are forwarded to them saying, oh, no, it's going to be a loyalty program, rewards program. We're just beginning right. to seismically shift the Disneyland experience to, to monetize the parks and all that kind of stuff. We we heard that from from the big cheese. You know, it, it wasn't just yeah. rumor. This stuff was happening. It was happening. <clears throat> and we heard all this stuff, all this chatter. And then the news drops yesterday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And we mm. finally get the news on this revolutionary program called Magic Key, which, by the way, I want to say before we dive into the, de the details. Yeah, I actually really like the new name. Um, oh, do you really? OK. I, I do. It's a throwback to the old Magic Key coupons in Disneyland's earlier um, years. Um, mm -hmm. I think the whole key branding opens itself and lends itself well to marketing and things like that. I don't know. I think it fits the brand um, much better, I think, than the generic just annual pass. You know? Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. I, I, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, this isn't the first time that uh, a big rebrand has kind of come about, you know, before the annual pass, it was the Kingdom Club and, you know, kind of all those kind of uh, membership pr programs that they uh, used to have dating all the way back to uh, Epcot's inception. So it's very, uh, it's kind of interesting um, in that it kind of picks up some of the, some of the history of the parks with it too, like you said. So I, I, I can see your point. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of interesting, but mm -hmm. you know, they released these details. Yeah, and it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Now, me and you and I have a have yes. a mutual friend, right? Yeah, uh, I'm not going to mention the name of this mutual friend because no. he is a source. He is a oh, source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we did hear from this mutual friend not too long before this announcement, and kind of gave us heads up that mm -hmm. this program was going to be eh, pretty much more or less the same as what we had before. Wait, and, I'm, and me and you were like, there's no way. Come on. Come on. And then the news drops. And yes. he is absolutely right. He, <laughs> he, he is the goat. He is the great. I mean, he called it 100%. The goat. Absolutely the goat. <laughs> Look, and it's kind of funny because when when that information, you know, you, you, you kindly rel relayed that information to me yeah. with our mutual friend. And I said, wow really like really this is what it's gonna be because remember for months we were hearing i, I was hearing some pretty deep rumors as late as june going like okay this is what's gonna be here you know it's gonna be it's it's gonna be broken up into in the various tiers you're gonna have uh, you know loyalty points reward rewards program that's going to encourage spending at the parks and so forth and predicating in all those things so when we heard it yeah i mean i i was shocked i was taken aback even knowing the source even knowing God, let's just say they know their stuff okay right. they know their right. stuff and never see me wrong before and it's just like I, I, I really couldn't believe this and sure enough you know <laughs> just shortly thereafter they announce it and boom 
uh, here it is. It, and uh, I, I, it, that was that was quite fascinating. It was fascinating. And I mean, this is really crazy because not only is it pretty much the same program with mm-hmm. reservations included and and you have to most passes now have to pay for parking. So there are some changes, but sure. for the most part, it's pretty much the same program. And it's even a little cheaper from what I understand. Yes, it is. I believe the previous uh, top tier or whatever was, like was 15. Or yeah, it was like uh, it was like 14 1500 something like that. Right. And this was very surprising because we had heard lots of rumors that they were like, you know, we're going to we're going to move up the cost here and and you're going to be paying more than you have more than you ever have for 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 less for less va- you know, for 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 less value returned. And uh, honestly, this is pre you know, this is pretty comparable relatively speaking to the the previous just base prices. The devil is in the details though. And so I think valuation is going to be a huge thing going through here, but uh, do you, you want to give us a surface level of notes here? Um yeah, I mean, look, I mean, we're going to go th- kind of through here and right. um let's go ahead. And, so you have the dream key, which is pretty yeah. much the top, which I think this would have been like the signature plus, right? Right. Right. So and, and this is pretty much you can do six reservations at a time. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Um, from what I understand, yes. once one reservation falls off, so let's say yeah. you completed your reservation yesterday, mm-hmm. it opens it up, right, mm-hmm. for the next one. So that's kind of cool. Twenty percent off merchandise, which I think is pretty much what it was before, or close to. Close to, yeah, I believe so. Fifteen percent food and beverage again. I think that's pretty much what it was before. Mm-hmm. Theme park uh, parking included again. That was before. One hundred and two per month. If you're going to do those monthly payments. And you just go down the list. Now, the only difference is, is that the Dream Key is the only one that has the parking. All the other ones you have to pay for parking, although the Believe Key... 50% or, off parking. 50%. So you're paying like 10 bucks to park. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, it's not a bad deal. I mean, this isn't like... This was. This isn't even like really... Um, I mean, this certainly wasn't a revolution. Uh, this is more of like just an evolution, I guess. Uh, like, yes. You know? <laughs> which, which leads me to believe that this probably wasn't going to be the thing that they were going to debut. Let's right? let's talk about that. <laughs> let, let's talk about that. So what? Yeah. Do you, let, let's dive into that. So mm-hmm. yes, this is drastically different than I think than what we were expecting. So yeah. Dre, what are your feelings on that? What do you think happened here? Why the watering down? I think I. <sighs> you know, when they originally did it, um, when they originally cut the annual pass uh, holder program. Uh, that was around the time the directive was from JPEG that you know, we need to start looking at different ways of monetizing the parks in ways that we have never previously explored bef- before. You know, no, no, no uh, stone left unturned. We need to find money where we can find it. And I think going along with that, TDA has obviously for a long time suffered from this issue of the parks are just, they're just a little bit too accessible, right? We just have so many people in the park constantly. And a lot of that is because back in 2008 or around there, around uh, that time, they started doing annual pass holder payments and the passes themselves became a lot more accessible to a wider demographic. And the the numbers just skyrocketed from there and eventually culminated into having 1 million annual passes out there. And, that's a lot. When you have a new attraction debut, for example, the, the parks just get overrun. Uh, we saw various promotions get overrun. We saw various holidays get overrun. And, and it just it amounts to, uh, you know, a particularly bad experience for the guests paying dearly for the day. You know, we can't, you know, for, for guests who are visiting there, you know, they're, they're paying like $100 a day. And, and by the way, those annual pass holders found out what that experience was like real quick. <laughs> And so they they really needed to hem that in. And from what I heard for a long, long time was we want to take the the, the, the previous annual pass holder number and reduce it by half and do it however we however we could we could we could make that happen. I even heard do we limit how many passes that we sell a year? You know, that kind of uh, that that kind of conversation that 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 if it wasn't a limit that we could get to by hook or by crook by 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 I should say the the you know increasing the plot prices and having people fall off which by the way that was kind of an interesting story because 
when they increased the prices, you had uh, you 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 had annual pass holders who would maybe had like a signature plus or whatever. They just go down the one that the, the level before, the level underneath right. the previous one that they had. Uh, so you didn't necessarily reduce bodies in the park you just had them paying less so it was kind of if that wasn't that approach wasn't going to work so it was like okay if we can't do it like that do we have a hard cap on how many annual passes that we have out there just a hard cap and that's it when flex pass was introduced i think that introduced the opportunity okay maybe we can go a different direction and have a reservation based system that was the first time before covid before anything that a reservation system was going to be employed and you know people kind of looked at it and went eh, maybe that's not for me but i think people that were smart recognized this is the future going forward right. this was going to be a major component for all annual passes in some time at some day uh, the problem was is that people kind of re-up they just they just kind of uh, uh they they bought what they had before no matter what the price increase was and they just kind of re-up their, their their park passes and and there had to have been a point at one you know at some time or another to cut that at you know sometime and the pandemic provided that simple simple as that and with the new chapek directive it was like okay maybe we shouldn't just look at this as as far as uh crowd capacity maybe we can look at this as a as, as a rev revenue making opportunity and i think that's where those conversations then started from there but then going through it that mindset i think they had maybe in february that's kind of rapidly changed now that the economy really isn't really isn't where everybody kind of wanted it or expected it to be. Uh, combine that, um, I think, uh, obviously, with the current situation popping, popping back up in, in a way that nobody kind of thought about. Um, yeah. Obviously, we have to wear masks at indoor locations, um, at, at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. And I think with a combination of those two factors also, too, maybe Disneyland attendance, maybe wasn't where they kind of envisioned it. Walt Disney World annual pass holders weren't renewing in the way that they kind of thought or expected from what I have heard. And 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 that Disneyland SoCal offer was very was was key. That was kind of like, okay, maybe these things aren't aren't going in the direction maybe they they they, they previously thought. And so when it came time to actually debut a system before the holiday hoopla to get as many people on board, it was Maybe we should rein it in just a little bit. A lot of those features that we may have envisioned maybe could could be implemented, you know, uh, uh, afterwards, right? Yeah. Uh, down the line somewhere. Maybe our the price can be grown from from that point on, but we can't start out high because we might be forced. We might be put in a situation where we have to rely on the local population, especially right. for Disneyland. Gavin Newsom's still there, yeah, <laughs> and. Any amount of restriction could come tomorrow. They they don't know now. Obviously, there are some some bigger factors that play there. But just envision this, okay? Maybe they don't lock down completely this the state. Maybe they just lock down hotter areas. Maybe that includes Disneyland, right? right? Maybe that includes Orange County, or maybe it's like you know what? We have a lot of hot states out there. Now you can't service people out of state. You're going to need locals to pick that up. Right. So I think that's kind of why, like, okay, maybe maybe we just kind of have to rein it in a little bit and don't start out so aggressive so fast. Yeah, it, make, it makes sense. I mean, look, we're in the middle. We're, we're still in the middle of the pandy. Yeah. You know, I don't want to yeah. say, say it because, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we're in the middle of the pandy. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. We got the situation going on is what the I say. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that, I think in, I think it, it's actually the smart idea to kind of you don't want to shock the system. You don't want to right now when when you're kind of wanting to get every dollar you can, yeah. every head you can in the park. You don't yeah. want to completely revolutionize your 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 bread and butter, your you know your money maker, which is a pass program, right? And and potentially scare people off. Yeah, because I think with the with the with the current situation kind of going up like this, consumer confidence went. You know, right. and that's just like, ugh, like, uh, you know, are we even going to, even if Gavin Newsom doesn't shut, shut us down, whatever, are we going to get tourists in, you know, are, are we going to be able, are we going to be able to, 
to, to shift the equation from being a locals park to kind of a destination park in the middle of all this successfully. Right. At some point, we're going to need to lean on these guys eventually. Right. So might as well get them now. Exactly. Exactly. And the, re- and the reservation system, I was, a, I was a big critic of this early on. Um, I was yeah. like, oh man, I really don't like the idea of having to do reservations, but yeah. I've done it now a few times. I, I, I've gone, I think since the park reopened, I think about four times now, maybe five even. Yeah. I don't know. It's been a, quite a few mm-hmm. and I've never really had issues making those reservations. Right. Um, and, 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 and it, you know, it, it's been so far pretty good, pretty good. Now that might change completely with magic key because Correct, you have yeah. more people in the system. Vying right, 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 right. So mm-hmm. that might change, mm-hmm. but so far the reservation system seems to work on my end. And then even from a company standpoint, it works because now there's yeah. no guesswork. We right. know exactly how many people we need for staffing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We can turn that, that, that faucet on and off and adjust Correct. it any way we want. Right. There's much more control. There's no shock of like, Oh my gosh, there's a tidal wave of people and we weren't oh, yeah. prepared or none of that mm-hmm. anymore, you know? Yeah. So it, from a business standpoint, it makes sense. And um, I think Disney of all the theme park companies needed something like that because we do have a, uh, a crowd problem here. We hey. definitely do. The, the, the parks um, can get bigger, but that requires a lot of investment, a lot of time. And as, as I mean, it was just year over year, more, you know, uh, more attendance, more attendance, more attendance. And, it just it just wasn't going away. So set yourself up in a position, even though right now it's kind of like you know volatile. Set yourself in a position where you'll be able to account for those things. Uh, not only that, but in the future, right? right. And and so it, I I think I do think it was a smart move to move in this to move in this direction. And it's a much better th- fix than just year over year huge price increases to try to get people to drop off. Right. And then you then you had the the really bad PR hit every single year. In addition to uh, having a hard cap, which, you know, reduces the amount of money that you can make per month because, you know, you only have 500,000, uh, and, uh, annual pass holders versus, uh, you know, having a million or, 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 you know, uncapped or whatever. So I think this was, this was, this was better. I think for the guests though, and you know, when you look at these prices, I don't, I don't think people kind of have it fully that the valuation is, is going to be substantially changed. Yeah. You know, even though you can go 365. You know, technically, in reality, in practice, that might not necessarily be the case. Not gonna happen. So, this pass that you were paying three hundred, you know, for three hundred sixty-five days, maybe you only get ninety days out of it. Right. You know, that, that that's possible. <coughs> even if even if you could make three hundred sixty-five days, like, a crazy person like that. <laughs> um, well, anytime, anytime you have a reservation system, it's yeah. automatic blockout dates. Because exactly. There's never going to be a hundred percent availability there's always going to yeah. be that one day now i've lucked out i've lucked out yeah. for the five four or five times i've done it but i'm mm-hmm. not going to always luck out there's right. there's going to be a day eventually that i hit that is going to be full you know yeah yeah and that's why i you know i'm kind of trying to tell people right now like i know you're excited i know it's like great it's awesome it's fantastic but think about it let's say let's let's say on the conservative end we have two hundred fifty thousand people buying these tickets um, I'm getting the breakdown right here. Mouse Planet actually put out a uh, Twitter poll, which, um, you know, you can question whether or not that's actually representative of everybody. But I, I kind of think it is. If, if, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're into that world, you're probably following Mouse Planet. You're probably contributing. True. I think you can extrapolate some data out of this. 35% say they're going to go with a, a, a dream key, you know, the okay. $1,400 job. And then 26% believe key. 27% enchant key, 12% imagine key. Uh, just both breaking down their uh, poll here. You have to understand that you're going to be competing potentially, you know, you know, uh, um, depending on the day, maybe with 250,000 people right. <laughs> for a park that only can hold like 50,000 right now. And you know, they're not going to give that all that space up to just the annual pass holders. That's going to be a split. Right. And it, you know, everybody's kind of expecting maybe 50 50, but who knows? You know, that's a lever they can pull any given day. Maybe right. you have a holiday where it's like, maybe we want a little bit more tourists in there and let's say peace. So we limit it to 25% of capacity instead of 50, that kind of thing. But even at 50, you're talking like 25,000 slots. 
essentially. Right. And you're going to have to compete for those. So I, I'm just telling people right now, especially what we saw out in Walt Disney World, this became kind of an issue. And it could have been, you know, that, that, that this issue could have been mitigated with their no-show policy, which I love. That is absolutely something that needs to exist. But I'm trying to tell people, like, just wait, like, two months, maybe. Just just kind of, let's see how this works before buying into a year, now you're stuck with it. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, like, look, the reservation system so far hasn't been an issue, but yeah, that's also with, the, with everyone having to pay full price every yeah. visit. It's going to be different now. You know, it's going to oh, be absolutely. different now that the past program is back. Right. And oh, all those people are flooding the, the system. Yes. It's going to be vastly different. And it's it might be-, be a lot harder getting those days. See, and, and, and here's the other thing, too. These parks have sold out um, at various times. Now, obviously, they, they've been trying to incline capacity as, they, as they've gone along here. But they have kind of sold out in some of these days. Our friend Rudio was pointing out. Uh, which, you know, we love you, buddy. You're awesome. <laughs> yeah. But our friend really was pointing out that, hey, look, a lot of people that were annual pass holders aren't going right now because they're waiting. They're right. waiting for, um, you know, uh, an annual pass holder replacement system to debut. Now, not all of those are going to jump on board and maybe, but, but a, sub- a substantial part of that is. And so we just really haven't seen the full implications of both these systems working in tandem, both, uh, you know, tickets using a reservation system reservation-based system and an annual pass holder uh, system using a reservation-based system. We haven't really seen that before. We haven't. Not in the local Disneyland market anyway. Now, the no-show thing is great because, you know, Walt Disney World, people just, people just, they just book out dates and then just not, not use them just to have them. That's, that's, I, I, you know, and pardon my French. Yeah. But that's horse shit. I know. When people do that, you have people that are, that, that these are once in a lifetime vacations in Florida. Yeah. And you're going to sit there and block out dates and then just not even use them. That's total disregard for other, I don't know. That makes right. me mad. Well, and, and that's why, like, you know, people would do that with uh, dining reservations at Walt Disney World. You know, they would get, like, Epcot reservations and the same night they would get, like, you know, um, uh, 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 Disney's Hollywood Studios reservations, for example, and they would just like pick and choose, but they would have two that they would they would they would have the option to go where they wanted. So that's why you saw, oh no, if you make a reservation, unless you cancel it 24 hours in advance, we're gonna charge you ten dollars a person. Because it either has to be a penalty for abuse of the system. Yeah, right? absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And so when when you see like Walt Disney World system where it's like they have no penalty system. Disneyland, like, we're at the outset. No, it's we're going to have a no-show policy. Basically, the flex system within 90 days, if you don't show up, like, I think three times, you can't make a new reservation for 30 days or whatever. That's good. That That's going to help everybody out to do that. And by the way, you know, you said after your you're, uh, a day frees up after you use one, right. if you have all of them booked. Good tip. Uh, I saw the, the, you know, Adam the Woo do this, okay? <laughs> you can reserve as soon as you scan in. So as soon as you scan in, be hitting that be hitting that, uh, that app nice. where you can reserve days, and you can reserve them right there. That way you can be kind of ahead of the crowd. Just a little a pro tip for you. You, you know, you got you to gotta kind, of, kind of suss out how these things are going to work, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Use anything to your advantage, you know? I mean, that's a good that's a good tip. And you said Adam the Woo, he was... He, <laughs> uh, that's, yes, that's that, tip. yeah, Adam Lou Daily Woo. Uh, that's that's what he does. He just, you know, because back over there, what's interesting about their system is that they only have three days, no matter what pass type you have. Wow, you only got three days, which is, which is great that they gave. Okay, we're gonna give six days here, four days here, two days here, that kind of thing. Uh, so he kind of had to, you know, you really have to kind of think about it. And some of the vloggers, especially, were caught in situations where they would have three days. Like, you know, booked, maybe July 4th, October 1st, that kind of thing. And they would have no free days. They couldn't go for for, for potentially months because they just don't have the days. They don't have the days available. So out there, it's like, you know, it, I mean, everybody's crushing for days. Everybody's trying to get the, get the next day that they can go. So they came up with all these different ways where you can kind of get ahead of the curve. One of the ways is as soon as you have used your reservation, the reservation that you booked, you know, previous you, you have none. You can get that next one as soon as you scan it and use it, and you're good to go. 
That's awesome. That's a great tip. And and thank you for sharing that. And thank you, Adam Wu. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> for, you know, that that's an awesome tip. Definitely mm-hmm. utilize anything you can. Why not? You know? Um, now I do want to do we're gonna we're gonna close out this conversation, but I do want to sure. do a quick programming note this weekend. Big show. Big show this weekend. Big show this weekend, man. I'm I'm telling you, it's it's big, it's massive. Go ahead. It's big. It's 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 all it's all regarding the Scarjo Disney Iger Chapek drama. Mm-hmm. So the lawsuit, the internal the the rumors and the and the um you know the the talks, the chatter about yeah. tension between Iger and Bob Chapek, the ramifications, what this means. Yes. We're going to discuss it. Um it's going to be great. It, Dre, you're on there, uh, oh. obviously with me this weekend. And, I'm on there. Uh, you're on there, and George, and we're gonna uh, Rudio. Rudio. Um, so we're gonna have a great conversation. Um, it, it's gonna be a good time. This is this whole ScarJo thing. We've talked about this a lot on Twitter and even yeah. off camera. Like this is a big deal. It, it's it's big. It's a lot bigger than you guys think about it. So if you want to know all those details, definitely tune in. I'll go over the the lawsuit and and, and everything that she's out. Uh, you know alleging and stuff like that that way you have a good insight into what that actually is and then we'll go into the speculation and what the larger ramifications of this means it's going to be a great show guys please tune in yeah absolutely absolutely so vash buddy thank you so much for coming on and discussing magic key with me today i appreciate it if you can kind of remind everybody at home where they can find you on social media uh best place to find me is right here at vash sky best that's the place to interact with me uh, always up for discussion on Twitter. Uh, uh, it's great stuff. And uh, and you guys have had, had a lot of comments. Guys have had a lot of insight. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, and then I'm on your channel at Orange Go 55 at Freshly Squeezed. Your source for juice and news and info. Squeezed fresh right from the grove. That's Perfect. where you can find me. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for so much for tuning in. Now, what everybody at home, what are your thoughts on magic key do you like the name do you hate the name what are your thoughts on the different keys that you can you can kind of buy into everything we discussed here with the reservation system uh, attendance everything we would love to hear from you comment below and make sure you check out the orange nerd show this weekend when we talk about scar joe and chafe heck it's gonna be wild thank you guys for watching and as always have a wonderful wonderful day bye-bye